So, okay, uh, so we're just at the point of uh, recapping the Minkowski inequality. I'm sorry for that interruption there. Uh, so, the Minkowski inequality says that if you have two sequences, X and Y, which are elements of LP, then, um, let's say the sequence X is some sequence X1, X2, X3, etc. And the sequence Y is some sequence Y1, Y2, Y3, etc. Then if I want to know what the sum from i is equal to 1 to infinity of, um, let's put this up here, of the modulus of xi plus yi to the power of p, to the power of 1 over p is, well, it's going to certainly be less than or equal to the sum from i is equal to 1 to infinity of the modulus of xi to the power of p, all to the power of 1 over p, times the sum from i is equal to 1 to infinity, uh, the modulus of yi to the power of p, or to the power of 1 over p. Right, okay, uh, so uh, next step is, um, is, to, um, is to decide on what we're going to use as our xi, yi's in this case. So, in this case, what we're going to use is the fact that we now know that this satisfies the convergence criterion. So, uh, we know that for all epsilon greater than zero, there will exist some point, big N, um, big N, which is an element of the natural numbers, such that if little n is uh, if little n is greater than or equal to big N, it implies that the distance according to the LP metric space of the se sequence x little n and the sequence L is going to be less than epsilon. Now just fill in what the distance uh, in the LP metric space between the sequence x little n and L is. Uh, that's going to be equal to the sum from i is equal to 1 to infinity of the modulus of x n i minus L i. So the difference between each of the terms, uh, s the modulus of that to the power of p summed over i is equal to 1 to infinity all to the power of 1 over p needs to be less than epsilon. Okay, right, so let epsilon equal 1 is what I'm going to do. Let epsilon equal 1. There will exist uh, some big N uh, which is an element, well, which is a function of 1, so I'll say big N 1. Uh, such that this is true, such that if I replace epsilon with 1, I, this is true. Uh, all little n greater than or equal to n1, and I'll put this here, so let's have x big n1, and I'll just uh, denote it by a subscript rather than brackets. Um, so this is some sequence in this uh, sequence of sequences. So we have x n1 1, x n1 2, x n1 3, etc. Uh, so there's our, our sequence x big N1 and basically if you take any uh, sequence um, x little n beyond that, so here it is x little n1, x little n2, x little n3, any sequence x little n beyond or equal to that sequence x big N1, uh, then this statement will hold, i.e. the sum from i is equal to 1 to infinity of the uh, difference between each of these terms, the modulus of that to the power of p, summed over all of the possible terms from i is equal to 1 to infinity, and then take that summation, do it to the power of 1 over p, that's going to be less than 1, basically. Okay, right. Now, what I'm going to do is apply the triangle inequality. Well, um, well, not apply the triangle inequality. Apply Minkowski's inequality, which is obviously very related to the triangle inequality in this metric space. Um, what we're going to say, basically, is uh, that... Uh, well, what we want to prove, remember what we want to prove, we want to prove, where is it what we want to prove? We want to prove this up here, so let me just circle that. Uh, this is what we're trying to prove. So, what we want is the side here to be Li, so Li here is going to take the place of Xi plus Yi. So what am I going to use as my Xi's and my Yi's in this case? Well, basically, I'm going to let Xi, so Xi, it's is going to take is going to have it is going to um, take the place of um, in this case it's going to take the place of. Uh, xi minus li, but I'm going to do it a different way round. So, I can multiply the inside here by negative 1, so that's what I'm going to do. So that one's going to become positive, and this one's going to become negative, basically. Uh, so, uh, that's 
that's um, trivial, basically, because uh, the modulus isn't going to tell the difference. So basically, all I've done is swap them around. I've got Li minus Xni rather than Xni minus Li, but it doesn't make any difference. This sum is the same thing, whether I, uh, whether I multiply this inside by negative 1 or not, and it's still going to be less than 1. So I'm going to let xi, in fact, equal li minus xi, rather than xni minus li. And I'm going to let yi, I'm going to let yi equal um, xni, okay? So xi is going to equal li minus xni, and yi is going to equal um, xni. So I do apologize for the confusing notation here. This xi was just some arbitrary part of the, um, part of the um, uh, Minkowski inequality, whereas over here xi was far more important. It was an actual um, name for a sequence in here. So don't let that confuse you. This means something totally different to this xi. All I'm showing you is which bits are going to go in where in the Minkowski inequality. Now, when I add both of these two together, as I do here, to get xi plus yi, what am I going to get? I'm just going to get y uh, li. So that's a good choice, basically. So if I fill all of those in, what I'm going to get is that the sum from i is equal to 1 to infinity of the modulus, now I substitute in xi plus y, which is just li, to the power of p, or to the power of 1 over p, is going to be less than or equal to uh, the modulus i is equal to 1 to infinity of, uh, now substituting what xi is equal to, it's equal to the modulus of li minus xi n, um, all to the power of, well, that's to the power of p, I'm sorry, I forgot that, to the power of 1 over p, and then plus, oh dear, sorry, I've got the Minkowski inequality wrong, it should not be multiplied by, it should be plus there, I do apologise for that, uh, then we'll put the plus, plus the sum from i is equal to 1 uh, to infinity of the modulus of yi, which will be xni to the power of p, or to the power of 1 over p, like so. Right, uh, and now what we can do is we can say, okay, because the, um, because the sequence xn, x little n, was an element of LP, because all the terms of this sequence were elements of LP, then this sum in here, this um, sum in here, this sum here, is going to be some finite value. That's less than plus infinity, basically. Uh, so when I do it to the power of 1 over p, it's still going to be some finite value. This, I have bounded. I have said this is less than 1. So this side is going to be some finite value, whatever it is. Um, so I get that this sum here to the power of 1 over p is a finite value. Take uh, both sides to the power of p, and the inequality still holds true. So I get that this sum inside here is going to be some finite value, because it's got to be less than or equal to some finite value. And of course, it's got to be positive, so it's bounded by 0 below, it's bounded by whatever this is above. So we're done. Uh, there we have proven that this sequence L is going to be an element of LP. What we've also proven in the previous video was that uh, the sequence of sequences, which was Cauchy, does indeed converge to this. It does satisfy the convergence criterion. Therefore, it converges to something which is an element of LP. Therefore, it's this sequence of sequences, if it's Cauchy, has a limit within LP. So, LP is a complete metric space.